Well, hello there. Don't worry. Your display is not broken. I filmed all the footage in black white. A happy 2023 to all of you. After months of preparation for the IBM Selectric video, I decided to go a different approach and go more for the the, the aesthetical, the design, the, the user perspective about um, those machines because showing the workings of the mechanism is pretty hard and also isn't that interesting to most of people that watch these videos. So I'm more about creating high quality videos, images and stuff like that and video about the IBM Selectric mechanics that I would be very happy would consume a lot of time that I simply don't have and that's the reason why it took so long to create this video in the first place because I tried it and well I didn't came up with the perfect solution. I also tried to got to dig more into the history about when the Selectrics were coming to the market and over the lifespan of about 25 years how they finally were succeeded by the entering of the personal computers also from IBM. The history behind that is pretty interesting and maybe I will do a second video about how the PC ended the span or the era of the typewriter. In fact, I created a blog post and the link you will find in the video description with a second link to a video of Adam Zar who has created a very nice video about the IBM Selectric in general. So my approach for this video was showing you the three IBM Selectrics I own and also narrate a bit over it. You will see the machines, you will see a bit of them in use. Let me know your opinion about this style of video and I hope you enjoy it. In my collection of typewriters, I own one of each of the main series of the Selectric. Namely, a red series 1, a grey correcting series 2 and a beige series 3. The first series was introduced end of July 1961 and was a groundbreaking machine back then. Now you were able to switch the writing font in a matter of seconds. Also, the machine was not able to look up as the typing element was the only moving part towards the paper. Sadly, my series 1 is defect, as you can see by the off-center tilting degree of the typing element. Repair parts are quite hard to come by in Europe, and the costs for ordering original parts in the US are simply too high. Still, it's a very beautiful and aesthetically pleasing machine. For demonstration purposes, I will mainly use the series 2 in a minute. This series 1 uses ribbon cartridges instead of spools holding the ribbon. Setting the margins is done via these levers that have to be pushed inwards to move them. The key on the top left of the keyboard allows you to write beyond the set margins. Here you can get a glimpse of the complex mechanism. Still, most of the machine is not visible. Nearly everything you can see is metal and needs a fair bit of lubrication. The most interesting aspect of the Selectric typewriters were the typing elements. Instead of type bars that hold one or two characters, all characters are located on one sphere the size of a golf ball. Replacing the typing element is done by lifting a latch on top. This releases a small clamp and now the typing element can be lifted off. The newly inserted element simply has to be put onto the rod and secured by pushing down the latch. As you can hear, typing with these machines was very loud. Can you imagine sitting in a room full of these? In 1971, the Selectric 2 was introduced. It offered the option of dual pitch, which meant you can choose between writing in 10 or 12 characters per inch. Also, you could shift the carriage half a space to rewrite words you mistyped before. The most obvious change, however, was the boxier, more industrial design. Personally, I think this still is a beautiful machine. 
The machine you see here is a correcting selectric tool. These machines were introduced a year later and offered the never seen before feature of correcting mistyped characters with a simple key press. But this only works when the carbon based ribbon is used, one as you can see here. And now for a demonstration of this machine. You can control the carriage by pressing the tabulator and the enter key. If no tabulator is set, the carriage will fly all the way to the right and ignore the right margin. The carriage return issued by the enter key will always halt at the left margin. In case you ever need to renew the platen, it can be removed very easily. Inserting paper is done in a matter of seconds by rotating the platen and align it afterwards. You have to take care however it does not crumble. Now follows a typing demonstration. I left the audio at the original level, so be careful it will be loud. Some keys repeat their actions when they are held down. In this case I print a line of dashes and you can see just how fast the machine can actually write. In 1980 the Selectic Tree along other models were introduced. This was the last and also most short-lived series by IBM, as the market was already starting to see the potential of word processing done via the personal computers. The new features were the new typing elements with up to 96 characters combined with an electrical scale indicator and the refined keyboard layout which would be the grandfather of today's computer keyboards. The machine now has more plastic inside and outside of it, namely the keyboard and the cover. Writing on this machine, however, is substantially quieter than writing on its predecessors. This is done by the plastics cover and a few rubber seals. The machine, however, still weighs just shy of 20 kilograms. On my Selectic 3, I had to remove the rubber fabric beneath this keyboard, as it was crumbling apart. With the removal, the typing is now much more refined, but the plastic keys still do not reproduce the refined haptic feedback of its predecessors. It just feels much like writing on a cheap rubber dome computer keyboard to me. I've done a little sound comparison of the Selectric 2 and the Selectric 3 keyboard for you. That's pretty much all I have right now. Now we'll follow a few photographs I took in the last months while preparing for the video. You will also find these photos on my website fatasbitze.net. Yeah, and I would like to thank you for watching this video. Leave a comment if you liked what you just saw or if you have some sort of constructive feedback. Thank you, goodbye, happy 2023 and stay safe. Goodbye.